So, by far, two of the most important characters introduced in Dragon Ball Super are Yamoshi and Zalama. These characters are so important that I cannot imagine the series coming to an end without the both of them showing up at some point and having a major impact on the flow of the story. Okay, you know what? I don't think what I just said really do justice to explain just how important these characters are. For example, Yamoshi is so important. He is either directly or indirectly the reason why everything we've seen happen to Goku and Vegeta so far has happened. And I mean everything, from Goku getting sent to Earth, to planet Vegeta being destroyed, to Goku meeting Beerus, the list goes on. Zalama, on the other hand, is so important that in hindsight, it's being said that the Z in Dragon Ball Z stood for Zalama. What if I tell you that Yamoshi and Zalama are not an island? Their paths and motives likely intertwine and are going to create a major impact in the future of this series. There is so much that I want to tell you guys, so I hope you stick with me all the way to the end. But let's just hop right into it and let's start with Yamoshi. Who is Yamoshi? We first heard about Yamoshi directly from Akira Toriyama in late 2017. He was responding to a question a fan asked, which was, was the legendary Super Saiyan Frieza feared the Super Saiyan God that appeared in Battle of Gods? Akira Toriyama responded by saying, in a certain sense, they are the same person. That is to say, very long ago, before planet Vegeta was the Saiyan's planet, there was a certain man named Yamoshi who had a righteous heart despite being a Saiyan. He and five of his comrades started a rebellion, but he was cornered by combatants and became a Super Saiyan for the first time. Though his transformation and fearsome fighting style shocked the other Saiyans, outnumbered, Yamoshi eventually wore himself out and was defeated. But this was only the beginning of his legend. Afterwards, Yamoshi Yamoshi's spirit wandered in continuous search of six righteous hearted Saiyans seeking a new savior, Super Saiyan God. Other than being the very first time we've heard about Yamoshi, Akira Toriyama's response created a lot of confusion in the fandom. Because of the way he responded to the question, many wrongfully believed that Yamoshi was the first Super Saiyan God. You don't have to take my word for it, just do a YouTube search of the word Yamoshi and you'll see how many videos exist calling him the first Super Saiyan God. The issue is, this wasn't true. Yamoshi only ever achieved the Super Saiyan transformation. Akira Toriyama went out of his way to make this clear in his response when he said, became a Super Saiyan for the first time. He also made this even more clear when he said that Yamoshi's spirit was currently searching for a new savior, the Super Saiyan God. Again, he didn't say Yamoshi attained Super Saiyan God. It was something his spirit is still searching for. I'm happy to say after my first video pointing out this distinction, the Dragon Ball Super Wiki changed the their description of Yamoshi to correct this mistake. Okay, great, so Yamoshi likely did not become a Super Saiyan God. The thing is, that's not just a trivial thing to know. That's actually a pretty big deal. Here's why. Yamoshi never became a God, but he somehow had knowledge of the transformation. After all, that's the reason why his spirit is still wandering. He is trying to find a new savior, the Super Saiyan God, which raises two questions to me. The first one is, how did Yamoshi gain this knowledge? Was there a Super Saiyan God before him? One that he fancied a savior? Is this who taught Yamoshi the ritual and exposed a Saiyan's potential to tap into divine key? Did a Super Saiyan God exist in Yamoshi's time, which was only about a thousand years ago? We've seen from Beerus and the Kais that gods have a lifespan of at least millions of years, probably even billions. So if a Super Saiyan God did exist, does that mean that Yamoshi's spirit is searching for a specific person? And that brings me to my second major question about this which is, is Goku really the Super Saiyan God that Yamoshi's spirit has been searching for? I mean, when you think about it for a second, you realize that Yamoshi isn't looking for the Super Saiyan God for no reason. He wants the Super Saiyan God to be a savior. But a savior for what? At first, I thought this was obviously the Saiyan race. But again, when you think about it, you realize how could Goku possibly save the Saiyan race it was already destroyed. If we're talking about saving the race via repopulation by having kids, you don't need Super Saiyan God powers for that. So that can't be it. But Yamoshi's quest to find the Super Saiyan God didn't stop after the Saiyan race was pretty much completely wiped out. That implies to me that Yamoshi's purpose for trying to find this Super Saiyan God extends far beyond the Saiyan race. I wanna leave that right there for one second and talk about the Super Saiyan God transformation. 
But I want you to stick with me because I'm going to tie it all together. I promise. When Goku uses the Super Saiyan God transformation, does he really become a god? Let's think about it for a second. Gods are practically immortal. Does Goku become immortal when he transforms into a Super Saiyan God with the red hair? I mean, that's never been fully explained, but I don't think it'll make sense to assume that that is true. Consider this for a second. The only mortals turned divine in the series are gods of destruction. All the other gods, so the Kais and the angels, they are of one race, respectively, and they are naturally divine, whereas the gods of destruction are mortals turned divine. They're individuals from naturally mortal races. By the way, I'll leave a link in the description to all this information if you want to read up more about it yourself. It's all pretty interesting stuff. It's likely that mortals who become powerful enough and are recognized by the angels can then be granted the ability to manipulate divine key and then the angels who are naturally divine who have mastery over things like life and death we see that when we brought frieza back to life in an instant the angels are the ones who give these mortals immortality changing them to a deity to a god what does this mean this means that goku and vegeta are still mortals so they're not yet gods, even when they're transformed using their Super Saiyan God transformation. It also means that the only way for them to officially become gods is to be recognized by an angel likely Whis, and still then, the only kind of god that they're going to become are the only mortals turned divine gods that we know of now, which are gods of destruction. But remember, Yamoshi is searching for a savior. If Goku became a Super Saiyan god, whose only purpose was to destroy, which is what a god of destruction is, it'll seem a bit counter to what Yamoshi is looking for. And this is where I think it all ties together. Because the Super Saiyan god transformation is is a backdoor to a mortal, well specifically a Saiyan, gaining access to divine key. Interestingly enough, a Saiyan's personality already very closely matches that of the typical God of Destruction. But one of the requirements for the Super Saiyan God ritual is to find Saiyans that are much different than the typical Saiyans. These Saiyans need to have a righteous heart. And this is likely because the divine key that the transformation allows access to is much more than just the the destruction side of the key that the angels currently share with the gods of destruction. It likely also includes all the attributes of righteousness. So I just want to make this clear here. The divine key that Goku and Vegeta tap into when they become Super Saiyan God has more than just destructive qualities. This isn't my opinion, this is a fact. I've made another video where I explain this in great detail, but we've seen Goku do things like heal giant wounds instantly, or revive Master Roshi in the Tournament of Power, or use his own key to heal and bring himself back from death after he was killed by Hit. Again, this isn't opinion, this is fact. And those were just a few examples. It goes a lot deeper than that. I'll link that video here for you. I'll recommend you check it out after this one. My point is Goku and Vegeta's Super Saiyan God transformation is tapping into a type of divine energy that may rival that of even the angels. It is much more than what the gods of destruction tap into. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. I'm not saying that Goku and Vegeta are as strong as the angels. That would be like saying Topo is as strong as Beerus because they both tap into the same type of energy. All I'm saying is the type of divine key that the Super Saiyan God transformation allows access to rivals the divine key that the angels use. So here we have a ritual that allows Saiyans, specifically Saiyans, to some extent bypass the authority of angels and gain a power more than what the angels are usually willing to share with mortals. A power that may even rival or be greater than the angels themselves. Where is this going? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting excited. I love when the video gets to this point. So let's just keep rolling. The only being that we know of who has power that not only rivals the angels, but is also likely more powerful is Zalama. Yes, we can argue that Zeno the Omni King is more powerful than the angels, but Zeno only seems to be able to do one thing, destroy. And as of right now, we're not even sure if he can destroy angels. Zalama, on the other hand, appeared to have had a power more similar to what we've seen from the angels, the power of creation. So who is Zalama? And how could I say he had the power of creation, a power similar to the angels and likely even stronger than Zeno, the Omni King? Well, Zalama is the deity, the god, who created the most important thing in Dragon.
Dragon Ball Super. The Super Dragon Balls. The thing that's most interested about Zalama is that the wish that Dragon Balls can grant are usually very closely tied to the power of their creator. A set of Dragon Balls cannot grant a wish that exceeds their creator's power. And since the Super Dragon Balls can grant any wish without limitation, it implies that Zalama's power was limitless. The Super Dragon Balls can even reverse what Zeno has done by returning erased universes, which implies that Zalama's power is even higher than that of Zeno. What if the divine key that the Super Saiyan God ritual allows Saiyans to tap into is a fraction of Zalama's divine key? And before you disagree, hear me out. Not only is Zalama likely the most powerful God to ever live, but he also had a special connection to universe 6 and 7. We know this because these are the only two universes where the Super Dragon Balls appear. Something else that Zalama has a special connection to also only appears in Universe 6 and 7. And that's the Namekian race. Because the Namekians were able to copy Zalama's work and make Dragon Balls of their own, like the ones found on Earth and Planet Namek, it is widely believed that the Namekians are either descendants of Zalama or were at some point his students. The Namikians are the only other mortal race that we've seen in the series that have found a way to tap into divine key without the need of angels. For example, both Kami and Dende, the gods of earth, possessed divine key and used it in the creation of the Dragon Balls. This is likely because of the race's unique connection to the god Zalama. There is another race that is unique to universe 6 and 7 and that is the Saiyan race. What if long ago the Saiyan race also had a connection to Zalama? When you factor in that the Super Saiyan ritual needed Saiyans of righteous hearts, which is borderline impossible to find in universe 7, but is actually pretty abundant in universe 6. It's almost as if these two completely separate branches of the Saiyan race are two different sides to the same coin. They need each other to realize their full potential. What if the Saiyan race was split between universes for a reason? Maybe they disobeyed Zalama, or maybe the race simply wasn't ready for that type of power. And so, while the Namikians got to stay relatively the same across universes, after witnessing the power of the original Super Saiyan God, Zalama decided that the Saiyan's race true power had to be split into two. This could explain why the Super Saiyan God ritual was written in the Namikian Book of Legends, because both races were once disciples of Zalama. This is the power that the true Super Saiyan God taps into, the power that Beerus dreamt about, and the true wielder of this power is the Super Saiyan God Yamoshi is searching for. That's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. If you made it this far, Hashtag true God in the comments below. Dooku, I love you guys. Have a great day. I'll be talking to you again real soon. Bye.